Okay, uh, today we're going to deal with uh, four very special Maclaurin series, okay? And I'm going to need you to write these down, okay? So pause the video as you need to. Now we've been building these in class. I'm just going to summarize them. Remember, we are centered at zero for Maclaurin series, right? So we've built one for e to the x, and e to the x was equal to this. All right, and we built one for sine. Now notice with sign on only keeping the positive terms. Now here's the cool thing with these Maclaurin series. These are equations. So I can take the derivative of both sides. So if I were to take, say, the derivative of sine of x, that would be cosine of x. And then I'll take the derivative of each of these terms. Well, the derivative of x is 1. The derivative of x cubed would be 3x squared. But of course, the 3 would cancel with the 3 in the factorial, leaving just 2 factorial, right? If you think about it. The derivative of x to the fifth would be 5x to the fourth. But again, that 5 would cancel with the 5 in the factorial, leaving a 4 factorial. And then the derivative of x to the seventh would be 7x to the sixth. But again, that 7 would cancel with the 7 in the factorial, leaving 6 factorial. So it's kind of cool that we can take the derivative of both sides. We could also take the integral of both sides. We can do all kinds of things. So we need to know these three by memory. We also need to know this one as well. Okay. Uh, actually, let me move that one down further. Now, with this one here, I would um, remind you that, um, but why won't this let me, there we go, too far, of course, love my computer, oh, that's why I'm on the last page, well, we'll work backwards, um, I would remind you that, wasn't a geometric series defined as the first term divided by 1 minus all right, isn't that what the geometric series converge to? So if I'm doing this 1 over 1 plus x, well, 1 is the first term, right? And then I would rewrite this, instead of being plus x, I would say minus a negative x. So we're just timesing by a negative x to get each next term. So if I times by negative x, I get negative x. If I times by negative x again, I get x squared. If I times by negative x again, negative x to the third. And so on. So these four series, you got to commit to memory because they're a big deal in what we're doing here. Now we also got to be able to come up with... Um, these are the Taylor polynomials, right? Because they go forever. It's a Taylor, it's a polynomial because we're adding in everything, right? The plus dot, dot, dot. Adding in the ellipsis means this goes forever. It's not that we've written down the first four terms or the first six terms. We've included all of them. 
Well, the skill we've got to work on today is one, being able to do this, but also being able to write out what this is in sigma notation. Okay. So here's what we do. We're going to pick values for the exponents. Okay. And I'm going to say, I'm going to start off with maybe this will be the zero term, one, two, three, four. Now the question always asks, do you start with zero? Do you start with one? I'm like, you start with whatever you like. But I started with zero because notice those red numbers match up very well to the factorials and match up very well to the exponents. And so I would say this goes from n equals zero to infinity of x to the n power divided by n factorial. That's what that one's going to be. And we've got to be able to do this kind of thing. It's really not too bad. Okay. Well, again, I've just got a preference of starting my n values with zero. Now, if you notice on this one, right, so I'm going to write this one out. Do you notice how it alternates? Remember how to fix an alternating thing? It's negative 1 to a power. And I'm going to do the power of n because every time the n is an odd number, like 1 or 3, we have a negative value. So that negative 1 to the n kind of takes care of all that stuff. Now, we're multiplying this by x to some power. And if I notice the powers of these x's, they differ by 2, right? So I know this has to be 2n, right? If they differ by 5, we would say 5n. If they differ by 3, we would say 3n. But we always got to check. Like, I always like looking at the big number here, 3, when n is a 3. If I put that 3 in here, 3 times 2 is 6. However, we need a 7 there. So I think we would subtract 1 from it. Now, we did spend some time in pre-calc doing this, but it was about a year ago. So it might have been some time. That's what the numerator is going to be. Now, our denominators, they also differ by 2. So I'm going to say 2n, but again, when I put a 3 in, 2 times 3 is 6. We need a 7. So if I subtract 1 from that, that should work out. Now you always should check it, so I might check it right here. And if I put a 2 in there, we have x to the 2 times 2 minus 1, which is 5, so x to the fifth. And in the denominator, we have 2 times 2 um, minus 1. Well, I guess I should have done plus 1. That was a mistake. I'm glad we checked. Because again, when I put a 2 in, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. That's the way this would work. And so this is the Taylor polynomial for this. It's the Now, the blue is the Taylor polynomial, and so is the red. But there are different ways to express it. Okay, now let's look at this next one here again. I like starting with a 1. Because I notice that every time n is an odd number, we are negative. So negative 1 to the n kind of takes care of that. Now I notice that there is a power for the x, and I notice those x powers differ by 2. So we're going to say 2n. Now let's check, like say this term right here. When n is a 3, it would be x to the 2 times 3, which is 6. That checks out. That's good. Now in the denominator, I think we're also going to go with 2n factorial. Now, i got to put the 2n in parentheses and make sure we know that is the factorial. Now, what's nice about this summation stuff? Well, since they are composed of general terms, we can figure out, hey, what's the 15th term in this sequence, right? Okay, let's do this next one here. 
Now again, I'm going to start with my n values. This is 0, 1, 2, okay. And again, negative 1 to the n because when n is an odd number, we are negative. And these are just powers of x's, right? Now, these powers all differ by 1. So I'm going to say x to the 1n, or just n. And if I try out, say, the fifth term, I put a 5 in there, it's x to the fifth, it works out. Okay, so that's this first part. Now the second part that we're gonna deal with is the worksheet that you were given. And what I'd like you to do is to, um, this will be worked on block day as well. This video is only going to explain the first 11 problems, okay? Just the first 11. So if I look at say problem number one, it says generate the first four non-zero terms and the Taylor term. So we are told f of x equals x squared sine of x. Now we have to generate the first four terms. Well, let's look. We've written down what sine of x is equal to, right? We know that sine of x is equal to the first four terms now. x minus... Oh, here's, all right, so here's a little caveat here. No, that, no, this is good. Never mind. So x minus x to the third over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 minus x to the seventh over 7. Okay, now it says write the first four non-zero terms. So this is really going to be approximately equal to, right? I'm not going to put in my ellipsis because if I put in the ellipsis, like if I put in this plus dot, 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 that means I've written every term after that. And that is not what we're doing here. We're writing out just the first four terms. Now, so we took care of sine of x, but we need to get this x squared. So what we'll do is we're going to multiply both sides of this by x squared. Oops, got it typo here. Sorry about that. And again, notice we're saying it's approximately equal to because we're not writing on every single term. Well, now that we have this, we need to also write out the Taylor term. So again, the Taylor term is the summation, right? So again, I'm going to start off with my n value starting at a 0, 1, 2, 3, because that way these odd numbers are the ones that hit the negative powers, right? So here's my Taylor term. Again, negative 1 to the n. That takes care of the alternating signs. Now, in the numerator, we have an x. And if I look at the powers, these powers all differ by 2. So we're going to say 2n. But again, we're going to check a term here. When I put a 3 in, 2 times 3 is 6. But we need a 9. I think we need to add 3 to that. In the denominator, these factorials are different. Now, again, I could carry this out. Like, this would be over 1 factorial, right? These factorials differ by 2, so I'm thinking about a 2n, but I better check and make sure. When I put a 3 in, 2 times 3 is 6. We needed 7, so I better add 1. 
Okay, now last time I messed up, so let's check on the term to make sure we're right. I'll try this one here when n is a 1. Yep, those numbers work out, and we've got this. So again, this part here, this is the Taylor term. And um, if I look at um, just this part without the summation, okay, that is the general term. All that thing I highlighted in yellow. So the general term, you could use that to figure, hey, what's the 15th term in the sequence and so on. Well, that's how number one is done. Um, I want to do uh, two others here. I know this is getting long. I'm at 16 minutes already. I'll try to get this a little quicker, at least convey the ideas across. So if we look at um, number 8, for example, we are given the sine of 2x. Well, if I write out what we memorized for sine of x, sine of x is equal to the following, right? And I already messed up. It should be approximately equal to, right? Because we're writing out just the first four terms. Now the question said they want to know the sine of um, 2x, though. Well, what we'll do is we're going to redo this one, but we will just replace. I'm going to leave all the x parts blank for now. And what we'll do is we'll replace all the x's with 2x. Okay, I'm not going to do the full thing on there. I just want you to see what's going on there. And then one more, and it'll pretty much take care of it. You'll be able to do the rest of the stuff, at least 1 through 11. Let's look at number 2. Again, pause it if you need to, but we're going to move on to 2. Okay, number two, you're trying to figure this one out. Well, first of all, we do know one for cosine, right? Your term here. You're going to see why in a second. Again, this is supposed to be approximately equal to. Sorry about that. Well, do you notice how we see a um, subtracting one here? So, what we should do next is we should um, subtract one on both sides. So that we would have cosine of x minus 1 now. Now when I subtract 1 from both sides, I think those 1's will cancel, leaving this. Because after all, this is an equation, right? So we got that far. Now what we'll do is we got to figure out, um, we got to do this part over x squared. So what we will do now is we will um, divide both sides by x squared. So see how I'm dividing each term by x squared. 
So we wind up with the following. I think those x squares are going to cancel, so we have negative 1 over a 2 factorial. I think this, these x squares and x to the force will cancel to give me an x squared on the top. And I think these will cancel, leaving an x to the fourth on the top. And I think these will cancel leaving an x to the sixth on top. Okay. Again, don't forget to be doing the general terms on these as well, but you should be able to do numbers 1 through 11. Um, I will post my answer guide um, tomorrow morning, or maybe later tonight. That way you can kind of check your answers and see if you did them correctly. All right. Again, sorry this went to 21 minutes. It was just way too long, but couldn't be helped.